Bia. My name's Yvonne Lorcan, and today I'm going to introduce you to a taste of New Zealand through the fantastic wines of the Wine Portfolio, a company that owns seven vineyard sites across New Zealand. Now, New Zealand is a beautiful island country located 1,500 kilometres southeast of Australia. Now, due to its remote location, it was one of the very last lands to be settled by humans. And even today, the population of New Zealand is just four and a half million people. Vineyards benefit from the moderating effect of New Zealand's maritime climate, with long sunshine hours and nights cooled by sea breezes. In fact, no vineyard in New Zealand is more than 120 kilometres from the ocean. And just like France, New Zealand's cool climate creates wines that are famously distinctive for their purity, vibrancy, intensity and balance. New Zealand produces less than 1% of the world's wine, which is why you don't see New Zealand wines everywhere, only in the best service and retail establishments. Our modern wine industry is only 40 years old, but in a very short time, New Zealand wine has made a huge impact. Unlike old world wine regions like France, New Zealanders are free to produce any type of wine they wish from any part of the country. From elegant, delicate, sparkling wines and aromatic whites like Pinot Gris, Sauvignon Blanc and Viognier, to bold, juicy Chardonnay, luxuriously earthy Pinot Noir, peppery Syrah and rich, deeply flavoursome Merlot and Cabernet based red wines. This tiny country produces world-class wines that consistently over-deliver in terms of quality for the price. The Wine Portfolio is a company that's embraced the unique characters of wine regions in the North Island and the South Island to craft award-winning wines since 1978. The original owner of Morton Estate was Morton Brown. Right. And he came to the Katy Katy area to grow kiwi fruit. Kiwi fruit, okay. But just when he arrived, the bottom fell out of the market. So he switched to growing grapes. And at the same time, he built this amazing building we're standing in at the moment. Everyone, right down from the vineyard staff to the winemaking staff, we're all so passionate to produce an outstanding wine. And it's just fantastic to be able to work amongst those sorts of people. The company's gradually expanded from their original vineyard site in Katy Katy, further south to the sun-baked soils of Hawke's Bay, and then south again to the famous Marlborough regions of the Waira Valley and the Awatere Valley. And the brands have been developed and refined under the watchful eye of the current owner, Mr John M. Cohen. So there's no better place than New Zealand to be in the wine business. Um, also, you know, you like to be associated with people who are passionate and professional and dedicated, and we've certainly got that. I think we should salute you and yeah. your great team. Uh -oh. Cheers. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. And the Owl Tree. And the Owl Tree. <laughs> Mr. Coney was so impressed when he tried a Morton Estate Pinot Noir from Hawke's Bay back in 1995, he and his family purchased the company. And ever since then, they've been acquiring great new vineyard sites in Marlborough and in Hawke's Bay, and they even built a brand new winery at Riverview. Welcome, I'm John Arledge, and you're at uh, Matapiro. We were the, one of the first producers to come to this side of the river. People thought we were nuts because it was so far out. My wife thought it was nuts because I had to bring her out here. <laughs> These soils, all pure red metals with the smallest amount of topsoil, so it gives us complete control over viticultural practices. We belong to the Sustainable New Zealand system and we try and do things in a sustainable manner, obviously, with sheep doing a lot of our manual work with uh, leaf plucking and so forth. And really, it's a beautiful part of the country to live. This constant aim for excellence attitude led to the company releasing their flagship Chardonnay, Cornelio, back in 2001, and it fast became a national icon, scooping the International Decanter Award two years running. Tell me about the Cornelio. Cornelio, um, for us, is the, is the pinnacle of our Chardonnays. It's a wine that we, we only produce in, in very special years. Okay. Yeah, it's like white gold, gorgeous. It's a very elegant wine. It uh, has very ripe fruit characters, honey, caramel, butterscotch. Um, it is a very powerful wine, and it's just absolutely delicious. 
it's like creme brulee inside a little toasted oak bowl. Yeah. You know, it's gorgeous. And, and there's great fruit and there's little hints of vanilla and spice and, and it's just so slippery and kind of elegant. It just sort of slips down. Tell me, this wine, it's won a hefty whack of awards over the years, hasn't it? It's uh, won the best Chardonnay in the world at uh, back to back at the um, Decanter Wine Awards in London. That's extreme. It is. And, um, and this wine here on its, its first outing has, has won a gold. So where does the name uh, Cornelio originate? It's Italian for rabbit. Right. The proprietor of uh, Morton Estate is uh, John Coney. Okay. Uh, and Coney is uh, French for a type of rabbit. And the flavours are just leaping out of the glass. It certainly does. It does. See, I did that. was quite clever what I it did was, there, eh? That was, that was brilliant. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so you would have noticed that the Cornelio Chardonnay is sealed with a cork. And uh, if you've never opened a bottle of wine with a cork before, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to do it and how to do it stylishly. Firstly, take your waiter's knife or wine knife, take the blade and use it to trim around the top of the foil. Just like that. Just slowly so that you take care of your thumb. Take your corkscrew and pop it in the middle of the top. And just very carefully, press gently and twist and twist and twist until you've got about two curves showing up the top. Then you get to use your lever, all right? So you put the first one down, just gently prise it up, like so. Wiggle, 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 pop. There we go, all done. Now, you'll notice there are lots of different glasses in front of me, and I'm going to pour a Chardonnay, and there's a specific glass that works best for Chardonnay, and it's this one here. This is a burgundy glass. You'll notice there are aromatics glasses, sparkling glasses, Bordeaux glasses, and Pinot glasses. This one is my Chardonnay glass. It's a burgundy glass, and the reason I'm using it is because it's wide, nice and fat at the bottom, shallow, and very round at the top. So Chardonnay has heavier aroma molecules, and they stay low to the surface so you need a nice kind of low bowl shaped glass. Let's see the gorgeous colour. Look at that, beautifully golden. Give the wine bottle a little bit of a twist when you finish pouring and that stops any drips. Now look at the colour. Good Chardonnay that's had some time in barrel will have a beautiful golden colour. Think to yourself, how bright is it? Is it uh, sparkling, shiny, beautifully bright and vibrant? Then you want to give the wine glass a swirl. And the reason for doing this is you want to mix some oxygen in with the wine. Oxygen is going to help the wine release all those beautiful aromas and flavours. It's going to kickstart those compounds that are responsible for those beautiful characteristics. Now, take a deep, deep sniff. Now with Chardonnay, you're going to look for things like rich stone fruit notes. This has a creamy, butterscotchy character. I get those beautiful toasty notes. It's time for a sip. Mm. Now you'll notice that swirling around in my mouth, I made that slurping sound. By drawing some oxygen over the wine that's in my mouth, I'm encouraging more of those aromas to come back up through nasal passages, so you're almost sniffing at the same time as you're tasting. And it just helps extend the experience. And most importantly, you want to think about how the wine feels in, on your palate, in your mouth. Sometimes we're so focused on how things smell and how things taste that we forget about how they feel. And this wine feels beautifully rich on the palate and I can still taste it long after I've swallowed. So we've just tasted the flagship Chardonnay from the wine portfolio called Cornelio. And Cornelio is the Italian word for rabbit. 
and we're going to taste the Leveret range of wines very soon, and Leveret is the French word for young hare. Interestingly enough, with the Chardonnay, it's also used as the base wine for the internationally award-winning Leveret sparkling wines. A range of nine different sparkling wines using the old methods. Now once the wine is in bottles, it re-ferments and is then handled with care every step of the way until it leaves for market. And the latest winemaker in charge is Will Shields. The winery is absolutely humming, although I was going to say fizzing, because you're making sparkling wine here at the moment, aren't you? Yes, we are. We, we're doing our tirage, which is today. What am I leaning on here? These are quite crazy looking bins. This is basically a riddling bin. This is our manual method okay. and we get a strong person, stronger than me, <laughs> to, to move them around just to get all that yeast right down to the bottom. Right. We freeze the neck okay. and, and then take the top off and the pressure inside the bottle will expel that frozen plug of uh, yeast. Got some of the new premium brute just waiting to be put in well, uh, to be labelled. Yeah. I'm not going to pop it. Okay. I'm not going to because that's what um, uh, rally drivers do and people that win sporting events. Okay. The correct way is to gently ease it out of the bottle. Well, that was very stylishly done. Yeah. Wow. You're always looking for a bead, and um, the bead's the fancy term for the bubbles rising up. So you want a fine, consistent bead, um, and then you want a, a persistent mousse. And the mousse is the foam, yes. the creamy foam on the top. Yes. It smells really lovely. It's got this kind of bread crust and nutty aroma to it. Yes, and that's from the that's mm. from the lees aging, basically. Very good value for money. It's so tasty. And I kind of, I think it actually even tastes better down here with its mates. Well, it should do. <laughs> Wine always tastes better than the winery, they say. Cheers to that. Cheers. Yay. The wine portfolio are unique in that in this increasingly commercial environment where so many companies are motivated by profit and they're buying in fruit from wherever they can, this team own their own vineyards and their own winery facilities, which means they can control the whole process every step of the way. So what is that process? Essentially, it's very simple but extremely magical. Grapes are ripened on the vine and they're harvested either by hand or by machine at exactly the right point of ripeness for the style of wine that the winemaker wants to make. So the fruit is then transported to the winery where it is crushed and that juice is then put into stainless steel vessels or into barrels where the fermentation process is about to start. Special yeasts are either added by the winemaker or the wines are let to ferment naturally with the yeasts that live in the atmosphere of the winery itself. Now, red wines, they're quite different. When that fruit's crushed, all the skins and the seeds are left in contact with the juice during that fermentation process. And what happens, that extracts all that wonderful colour and tannin into the red wines. Whereas white wines, that doesn't really happen. You want to keep them delicate so you get rid of the skins and the seeds pretty much straight away. Anyway, so once that fermentation process is done, the wines are then filtered, cleaned up, and put back into tank or into lovely barrels to mature. So this is a French oak barrel, and the most common size is 225 litres, and that holds approximately 300 bottles of wine. They're not cheap. French oak barrel, average cost around 1,500 New Zealand dollars each. And the wine portfolio have over 3,000 of these barrels at the Riverview Winery alone. So it's a very big investment, but believe me, oak barrels are worth it because what they give to the wine is a beautiful, smoky, spicy character, a wonderful toasty note, all those gorgeous things that you want, particularly in your red wines like this one. Now this is the Leverett Estate Hawke's Bay 2013 Merlot Cabernet. You'll notice how I'm unscrewing the screw cap by twisting the bottle, not the cap. That's the nicest way to do it. As we pour it in, you'll notice that gorgeous colour, beautiful, rich and dark. Now, red wine, in particular, needs lots of oxygen. It needs to breathe to release all those beautiful aromas and flavours. So, if you don't feel confident holding the glass, start swirling it 
on a flat surface first, then gradually lift it up. I can smell it from here, it's just beautiful. With Bordeaux variety reds, expect to smell things like plum, boysenberry, dark fruits, cherry, chocolate, and all manner of spices. And there's an earthy character in there as well, and that comes from the fruit and the oak. That's just beautiful. Now a lot of people believe that wine has fantastic health giving properties, and I'm one of those people. Yum. Mm. That's good Bordeaux. Something else that tastes amazing around here is the local Bay of Plenty seafood and produce. Oh, Thank you. That was delicious. That's incredible. The scampi yabbies. No, why no, they're not you call them the scampi, scampi yabbies? <laughs> now I'm going to try mm. the sparkling with this beautiful mm. hollandaise mussel. Mm. It goes oh. really well with this, doesn't it? It's beautiful. Mm. Fantastic wines like these deserve to be paired with superb food, and that's exactly what we've done here for you. Now, the very first wine, a wonderful Leverett Estate IQ Metho Traditionnel. Now, these wines have a lovely, nutty, savoury character, and I think the best food to pair with this wine is a beautifully creamy, smooth cheese. Lovely, nutty notes there, teamed up with some crunchy oat cakes. Look at this beautiful lamb rack. Juicy, rare, gorgeous, Pinot Noir. That's my number one choice when I'm going to serve lamb. Now, look at this array of seafood. Beautiful, fresh snapper, some shellfish, mussels and clams. Sauvignon Blanc, Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc is absolutely perfect here. The freshness of the seafood, the delicate character, and of course you're gonna match it with some lemon and some herbs. Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc from Leverett Estate, absolutely stunning. We have rich curry with chilli, coconut, coriander, ginger, garlic, all of that good stuff. The number one pick, in my opinion, for this style of food is a beautiful aromatic white wine. And we've chosen the Falcon Head Hawke's Bay Pinot Gris. The sweetness of the wine, the slight spicy character just work beautifully with all of those wonderful spices in the curry. Now, one of my favorite food matches of all time. Pork with Viognier. Now Viognier is a wonderful white wine, really rich, redolent of apricots, spice, tropical characters, and there's a lovely uh, rich, almost oily character to Viognier. The richness of the pork and the Viognier match made in heaven. Gorgeous. Now over here we have some fantastic tender aged eye fillet of beef. The first thing that comes to mind is a really rich, spicy Merlot Cabernet. And here we have the Merlot Cabernet from Penny Lane. It's really dark, inky. You can tell it's going to be a really juicy, fruity, spicy red wine. Now, when I see roast chicken on the table, I think there's someone celebrating. There's nothing better with beautiful tender roast chicken than a glass of the Mimi Sparkling Pink. It's a wonderfully fruity, rich, zesty sparkling wine and it works beautifully with chicken. Now I'm looking at this array of fantastic seafood, scallops and crayfish. To me that looks beautifully self-indulgent, it's something that you just want to treat yourself with. So if you're going to treat yourself with seafood like this, pair it with a beautifully rich, succulent, juicy Chardonnay. Preferably one that's had a little bit of oak and it has a creamy character. And I think the Canelio is absolutely perfect with seafood like this. You must believe me, you really should try it. Now I really hope you've enjoyed today. I've really enjoyed speaking with you. I hope you've learned something and that you can take away some valuable skills and enjoy these beautiful wine portfolio wines. Mm. Yum. You, come in with me.